Welcome to the Tradesman Garage, I'm Justin Barabash, and today I'm going to show you how to make some American flag cornhole boards. Let's get to it. We start by cutting a 4x8 sheet of half inch plywood. I cut these down with a circular saw on the back of the truck down to a 4x4 foot length. So makes it easier to use on the table saw. Rather than getting kicked back, makes it much, much more efficient. We're going to cut these down to 2x4 foot lengths. After that, we start working on the frame. Using a stop block, set up your miter station to cut 4 foot lengths. We're going to need 4 of those, 2 for each board. For the tops and the bottoms, cut down sizes of 21 inches. Once we butt the ends up against each other, that'll equal out to 24 and make it nice and flush. After that, head over to the table saw, set up your rip cut for an eighth of an inch off of one edge of the boards. We're going to do this to all of the frame pieces. This is going to allow the plywood to lay flat. Once you got it set, let it rip. I'll leave a list of supplies and tools that I used in the description below, just in case you're wondering. At the time of the video, I was making two full sets of boards, so I did twice as much ripping as you're gonna be doing but oh so worth it. Look at that edge. Next, we're gonna drill pocket holes. Now, roughly you wanna be about six to eight inches apart for each hole. We're gonna do this on every piece of the frame boards, tops and the bottoms. Pretty long process, but you get the hang of it. You're gonna do a bunch of these, so get used to it. On to the frames. Using a corner clamp by Craig Jig, I hold the pieces together with the tops flush. Pre-drill two screw holes and then screw in two three inch wood screws per corner. I repeat this process until all the frames are complete. Make sure your batteries are charged here. It's going to take a lot of power to get all these holes drilled. Next, I clamp the tops of the boards down to the frame. A couple of quick clamps. I preset all of my screws in the holes. I'm using one and a quarter inch pocket screws. Then I attach the boards to the tops. Rinse and repeat. Now that I've got the boards attached to the frames, I'm going to make the center hole. Mark a point 9 inches down from the top of the board and 12 inches off of either side. That point is now your center. I'm using a circle cutting jig for my router to get a nice even hole. Once that's done, I hit it with a round over bit on the palm sander. Then I begin to sand. Typically I use 120 grit sandpaper. On rougher boards, I'll drop it down to about 80 and then step my way up, but really don't go any higher than 120. I think that's just sufficient. This was a lot of sanding. You could bypass this by getting primed plywood if you're gonna paint, or you could just use a higher grit sandpaper, but either way, rinse and repeat. Now that the boards are sanded, I'm going to lay down the stripes using green frog tape. It's a little bit stronger and more efficient than the blue tape. It uh, doesn't allow for stain or any types of liquids to get underneath, at least not as easy as blue tape does. The tape's about 1.88 inches wide, so I had to offset about an eighth of an inch from either end of the board. More or less, I just looked for where the straight line would be. After that, I cut the union. Using my stencil that I bought off Amazon, it was a little small, so I had to offset that sizing. Again, I just eyeballed this. Now I'm applying a Minwax gel stain in a hickory finish. I use gel stain because when you pull the tape off of the board, it leaves more crisp lines than you would with a, a liquid-based stain. Once 
Once you've got all your boards nice and stained, begin the peeling process. You could wait for this to dry, but with gel stain, after a couple of minutes, it's pretty much okay to give it a pull. I let the boards dry overnight, and then I began the stenciling process of the stars. Now for the stars, I bought a stencil off of Amazon and found out that it's too small for my size union, so I created my own little stick jig with the correct spacing. Again, that spacing is gonna vary dependent on your board. Everybody's union is gonna be a little bit different than the other, but once you find the spacing that works for you, stick with it. Now we begin the dremeling process. Using a Dremel and a detail attachment, I started to cut out each one of the stars, but I quickly found out that using that attachment really could be a strain on your hand. So I went ahead and moved over to the plunge router attachment. Set a depth for about an eighth of an inch. Again, I'm not trying to go too deep with these stars. I'm just trying to scratch off the stain. Using this attachment made it much faster process though, because now I don't have to go over each star three to four times. I can just do them all once the exact same depth which is great because it took about two hours to Dremel in each star per board. Once all the stars were finished, I went through and just did a little touch up to get any of the stain out, but voila, there you have it. Now we start to apply our clear coat. I'm using Minwax Pro Series Spar Urethane. This is a little bit better than your normal poly or polycrylic because it dries hard, fast, and becomes fully waterproof after 24 hours. Once the first coat dried, I used a piece of 220 grit sandpaper and a random orbital sander to knock down any of the rough edges and lines. You're not trying to remove the coat here, you're more or less just trying to smooth it down. After sanding down that coat, I applied another coat. I repeated this process about four or five times until I got the smoothness that I was looking for. Came back one last time and did a really thick pour over the stars just to make sure I got them about as level to the top of the board as I could. Then sanded one more time, making sure everything was nice and smooth, knocking down any rough edges. Do a final really thin coat at the very end once I'm done building the boards after moving around, just to make sure I got any of the scratches out or spots that I possibly missed. Flip the boards over, sand the frame, removing any poly, dust, glue, anything that really could have got stuck on the bottom of the boards. We're gonna smooth them out and then apply some stain. Now we move on to the legs. I used a two x four, cut them into 15 inch lengths, and then cut two 18 inch middle braces. You'll see what I'm talking about later on in the video. To round over the edge, I just used a piece of a cup, draw the circle, use the jigsaw, cut it out, and then sanded it here on the belt sander. My sandpaper actually jammed up, so I ended up using a wire brush to scrape away some of that residue. Saved me a little time in switching my belt, and I got a couple more passes on it before I had to replace it. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever done that before. I kind of just learned that one on the fly. Now that we've created the legs, we're going to go ahead and stain them and put some urethane on them. Once that dries, we'll attach them to the frame, and we'll be pretty much complete. After that's dried, I began to mark the center point on the rounded tip of the board. Here I'm using a compass to try to find the center point of the uh, round part of the board. Once I find that, I go ahead and use a 3 8 inch drill bit and drill the hole for the carriage bolt. Now you might have a little bit of tear out near the drill hole. That's not a big issue here since it's going to be hidden underneath with a washer and a nut anyhow. Using the trim piece that I got off of the rip cuts from earlier in the video and a spare piece of 2x4, I created two spacer blocks for the legs to sit on. This allows you to quit the guessing game and put the board exactly where it needs to be on all four points between the two boards. Much quicker process if you just do it with the spacers. I used a quick clamp to hold the leg in place and then I drilled from the inside out. Some people would drill from the outside of the frame into the leg by using a pre-marked location, but me finding the center point of that was just too much extra time, and this does the exact same thing without extra marking. Using a rubber mallet, I set the carriage bolt into the frame, 
and use a 9 16 inch ratchet to tighten the bolt down. Since the bolt started to spin here, I used a vice grips to hold it in place and then tighten it from the inside. This is totally fine. This happens more often than not. Once you get both of the legs secured, prop the board up using some spacer blocks. We want to get the board height to 12 inches. Once you do that, offset the board off the table and mark a line. Remove the legs and take the legs over to your miter saw. Adjust the angle for the cut and let it rip. But once you get both legs cut, reinstall them and get set for the brace. This is the last part of the project, so you've made it this far, congrats. Again, we prop the boards back up, get everything set, make sure the top of the board is level at 12 inches. Best way to do this is to set it on the floor, check for level, and then bring it back up to your workspace. Using a two foot quick clamp, I installed the 18 inch piece in between. Pre-drilled the holes, countersunk the holes, and then screwed them in with three inch wood screws. I did this to both sides. No specific spacing here. I put it about three inches below the bottom of the board just to give it a nice even look. Check, make sure it's level. And there you have it. Hey, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below where I need to improve and some mistakes that you saw that I made that I can improve on. Next, I'm gonna be making more cornhole boards with various different techniques, including using a tape up method and a vinyl cutting method using a Cricut Maker at home. So when that next video drops, I'll drop a link in the description below and I'll add a tile at the end of the video. But for now, check the description, find me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.